guys, this is a video that is going to show you what questions will come up in paper one uh, in the hydrology and fluvial geomorphology section. So let's take a quick look at these questions. Now, what I've done is I've grouped them into categories and we'll just talk through a plan for each one as we're going through. So the first one is the theme of floods uh, or flooding and it is the impacts. River flooding impacts people more than it impacts the environment. With the aid of examples, how far do you agree? So this question could be pretty, pretty straightforward in terms of a plan. You could look at it and think, okay, uh, well, first of all, you've got multiple case studies to maybe talk about with examples. That could possibly be with an example of a flood that you have studied. So you've definitely got to know one case study very well. I usually ask students to study two uh, flooding case studies, uh, one in a less developed country, one in a more developed country, one large scale, one small scale with different defense uh, techniques afterwards. So with this one here, uh, you could split it up into two paragraphs, which could be the impacts on people or the impacts on the environment. You could split it up into a third or a fourth, which is about maybe economic impacts or political impacts. So some of those themes may overlap. It just depends. You might also split it into your two different case studies. Paragraph one goes through the impacts of um, one of your case studies. And then paragraph two is going to have a look at your other case study. And within that, you can discuss the environment or the impacts on people there. So that's a, a fair idea there uh, of what could come up with flooding. There's lots of other questions about flooding. Another one would be a reduction or prevention. So that's just kind of the language that's used in the actual exam. So if you look down through these past paper questions, now just a reminder, I've taken these from the past, I think, four or five years of exam papers. If you go back a little bit further, you might find some other ones. Um, but generally speaking, we see these on and off every couple of years. Now, this is obviously a very popular one. It comes up all the time. Um, it's how to reduce the impacts of floods or to ameliorate the impacts or to prevent or reduce floods or their effects reduced. So a very common one here is doing a direct comparison between hard and soft engineering, for example. We can see this one here. Soft engineering is more effective than hard engineering in the prevention of floods. We could switch that around and say hard engineering is more effective than soft engineering. It's going to be the same question. And uh, yeah, you just might have to put more emphasis on it and just be careful. And above, we could say assess the extent, the aid of examples, assess the extent to which it is possible to reduce the impacts of river floods. Again, you're going to be talking about hard engineering, soft engineering. The view that river floods cannot be prevented, but their effects can be reduced. Okay, so that's a little bit um, more to the point. The hard and soft engineering might not uh, be the most efficient, but we can have a reduction of the impacts and also we can have some natural defenses for them as well and uh, things like evacuations, right? And it's pretty much the same one there at the beginning. So pretty much every one of these essays that have come up in completely different year groups or different exams, whether it's the winter or the summer, they're all asking for the same thing. So a lot of students would divide it up into maybe hard and soft engineering using some examples from their case studies. Again, you should have two and you should have examples of all the different methods that they use. I often offer a third paragraph, which is going to be about forecast and warnings. That's really important too. measurement techniques, warning systems, what they've done because of that flood interval levels. So if you can have that as like a third paragraph, that's fantastic. Now, again, just like the one beforehand, you could also split the essay up into your two case studies. If you had two, you could go into all the depth because remember, in a lot of cases, it's a culmination of all three, which is soft engineering, hard engineering, and then the forecast and warning, right? So those three categories come in together. So if you're able to bring up facts and stats about those in both your case studies, you're going to do really well. This is definitely an essay you should plan and you should master. So actually, we've got one of these, I think, on the course as well. So if you look below, you'll find links to the course where I just go through how to answer the perfect 15 mark question. And I give you a couple of examples of full marks versus like reduced marks, right? Like an eight out of 15. Then you see how much it takes to get to a 15 out of 15. So if you're having trouble with that, the course is really good. It takes about, I don't know, three hours or something to get through. Now, sticking with the flooding theme, now we're on to causes. Now, this one's really broad and you'll find it actually has a lot of repetition. So it's probably the most frequently asked 15 mark question, even though there's not specific references to it. So these two do make specific references to uh, the importance of factors that cause the recent flood or that rainfall intensity is the most important factor. Now, the only difference between those two is the first question on the top there. It's sort of 
forces you to use rainfall intensity as probably a a paragraph topic right whereas the one below it leaves it open to the importance of the factors so it doesn't really actually go into all the detail there now the way you would plan both of these you're going to have rainfall intensity in there anyways right so rainfall intensity how long it was for how much fell um, and you would also have other physical elements just like impermeable surfaces or different types of forest cover those types of things now, again, if you've got your case study and you know it really well, then this shouldn't be too difficult. There are going to be your examples and you can see what were some of the human and physical causes for the flood to happen there. Um, so, yeah, if you divide that up nicely, pick your big topics that you're used to talking about. So one paragraph might be land use change, for example. So if you talked about precipitation, you talked about the natural cycle, maybe drainage basin size, those type of things. But they really shouldn't be overly complicated um, and your case study information should be detailed enough to get you there. Now, straight after that, we can go into these questions on what influences the channel flow, storm hydrograph and floods. They're pretty much all the same questions because if you see the first one here, or sorry, not the first one, but underneath here, it says the intensity of precipitation is the most significant influence on the shape of the storm hydrograph. So the storm hydrograph is showing the channel storage increasing uh, to its peak discharge, just like the last time. That's pretty much what happens with these floods in the, in the main case studies that we've actually uh, looked at in the course. So here it's coming into it, but it does reference storm hydrograph. So it just means that you have to talk about it uh, in terms of the storm hydrograph vocabulary, like lag time, peak discharge. This is something you should have been doing in these questions anyways. So to prepare for these, you're actually going to find there's a lot of repetition. Now, again, it's picked one topic that it really wants you to show that you understand and then mix it with another maybe two, three paragraphs, depending on what way you're writing. Rock type then is another one and uh, on the shape of the storm hydrograph. Uh, rainfall intensity again coming up as the main topic to discuss this one here drainage basin shape and size I find like some of my students find that like quite hard and um, so they do have to know their case study really well in order to be able to discuss shape and size and um, with a lot of confidence right so I would highly recommend that up at the beginning then kind of a curveball there with urbanization but as I said human influence land use could have been one of the paragraphs here as well so you should have that in all case studies there and again here land use so that can come into things like agriculture and urbanization there as well and deforestation if you were just to use the topics that are on this you should be able to practice a paragraph to talk about urbanization maybe deforestation and agriculture precipitation intensity, rock type, and drainage basin shape and size. So if you practice out paragraphs for each of those and you're ready and prepared with facts and figures, it means that you should be able to have a good go of it no matter what version comes up in the exam. So there is a lot of repetition in this particular topic of hydrology and fluvial geomorphology. And the last one here, we're looking at physical questions. Now this is quite an interesting one because I find students are able to write about the physical features really uh, confidently in the beginning for eight marks. But when it comes to physical questions for the 15 marks, there's a very different technique to the one that I would teach in regards to writing about maybe like floods where there's an interaction with people. So instead you're actually required to know a lot about the formation of these features. So the first two are very similar. It's either that velocity is the most important factor influence on a sediment deposition of a river, and the other one is um, that it is sediment size, right? So what you could do in this case is you could make a paragraph about velocity. You could make a paragraph about sediment side. You could make a paragraph about something else, right? So it could be um, something like the shape or the gradient of the valley. Now, the only thing about that is that you would maybe end up repeating yourself and it's very hard. Let's say if you're talking about the velocity and deposition in a delta um, and you would try to explain the delta and then you would have to explain it again with sediment size and again with, um, let's say, if we did gradient, right? So if those were your three paragraphs, that's quite difficult. So what you should actually be thinking during this time is that, well, I could talk about the features instead, right? So a point bar, slip off slope, um, or you could be talking about braided channels. You could be talking about deltas or floodplains, and those could be a paragraph each, and you could come in with real life examples. 
which you should have ready, okay? And uh, the landforms themselves form examples there. So again, they're a little bit tricky to get right first time off, and often students um, spend a long time trying to painfully write them out, um, but there's lots of different ways to go about that. Processes and landforms of a braided channel and of a meandering channel are different. So processes and landforms, so that's a very describe and explain, you have to go through all the different factors there. And of course there are similarities there, these are the, uh, features that have a balance between erosion and deposition quite a lot and um, but they also have very distinctive differences as well so you can definitely find loads to write about so you could imagine that this would be sort of like two eight mark explanation questions plus lots of evaluation to join up the two ideas with a few examples. So again, we've mentioned some of these in the course. So if you find that you're a little bit lost or you're not scoring as much or too often, you should go onto the course there and where I teach you basically how to answer every question on the course from 15 mark questions, eight mark, seven marks down to the shorter questions and section one questions as well. But certainly if you learn how to answer questions, at least one from each of these pages, you're gonna put yourself in a very strong position moving forward to be prepared for almost anything that can come up. Now remember, they may throw a curveball, and there might be differently worded questions as well. Um, for example, here on this page, it's not talking about erosional features directly, so it could do something like that. Now, as I said, the information is in the course, so I'm not gonna teach you how to write all the essays on here and repeat myself again and again. Um, and certainly that doesn't help in the comments either because it's a bit of a process. But what I would ask you to do is to just give me a like if you enjoy this one and I'll make them for all the rest of the units. And also, if you've got any questions or ideas for videos in the future, please let me know. Thanks very much, guys. Good luck.